Uh, good afternoon. It's two o'clock on Tuesday, November 10th, 2020. My name is Joan Jennings. I'm the chair of the Public Art Committee, and I would like to call the meeting to order. Uh, the meeting is today at the Performing Arts Center at City Hall, and uh, it meets all safety and social distancing guidelines. Meetings are conducted using Robert's Rules of Order and are being broadcast live on YouTube and simultaneously on Zoom. Um, just as a matter of procedure, I'd like to read a, uh, an email that was uh, received by Diane Wood from alternate member uh, Oberlander. Uh, I would like to join tomorrow's PAC meeting via Zoom instead of in person. As I explained to Diane last week on the phone, I still do not feel comfortable with how COVID-19 is going overall and have been exposed to my neighbor who had it but is still coughing a lot around me recently. Also, my father-in-law and stepmother-in-law currently have the virus. I don't want to expose anyone to the virus. Furthermore, I have a final meeting with the adjunct union and St. Petersburg College at 3 p.m. via Zoom right after the PAC meeting. I am on the negotiating committee for the adjunct union, and if I do both meetings via Zoom, I can attend both. Otherwise, I would have to skip the PAC meeting. I think it would be better if the committee continues to meet via Zoom with the COVID numbers going down considerably. While I know that Governor DeSantis opened the state to meetings, that does not mean we must do that. I think we would still be safer to meet online until a vaccine is distributed. There was a reply from Diane to Oberlander, talk to the clerk's office, please uh, write an email before Tuesday stating the reasons you will not be attending the meeting in person just by Zoom, stating the COVID concerns and then leaving the meeting for another at 3 p.m. Send the email to my attention. I will let Joan know that you will be attending via Zoom from Diane Wood. Okay. Um, uh, we'd like to introduce our new uh, Public Art Committee meeting. David, would you like to tell us a few things about yourself? Um, sure. I've actually lived in Tarpon Springs for over 10 years. Um, had two houses here. Went on a little excursion for a year and uh, my parents have lived here, my sisters. My sister has a little business down there called Ella's Boutique. Um, so we've, we've kind of in, in, been in this Tarpon Springs for so long that we kind of feel like we're a part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, well, thank you for board. having me. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Uh, Marissa, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Ms. Jennings? Here. Ms. Gregory? Here. Mr. Meals? Here. Ms. Robinson? Here. Mr. Sallow? Here. Mr. Stackhouse? Here. Ms. Oberlander? Here. Marissa, I guess there'll be a notation that uh, about the two members on Zoom, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, it doesn't, uh, Mark, do we have any virtual guests in attendance today? We have one member of the public in attendance at this point with a raised hand. Okay. Um, I'd like a motion to approve the minutes from October 13th, 2020. I move that we approve the minutes. Can I get a second, please? I'll second. Bill? Okay, are there any changes, correction, discussion on the minutes? Okay. All, all in favor of accepting, of approving the minutes as submitted, say aye. 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 I'm sorry. Was that an I? Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going on to old business, the current project updates. Uh, the illuminated art boxes, uh, 20 boxes were ordered, received, and are in storage. All printing of the vinyl panels is complete and is being stored by the printer UPS at the public shopping center. A waiting installation, which was discussed at some length at the Sponge Docks Town Hall meeting last night, uh, November 9th. The Sponge Docks Merchants Association in particular urged the installation of the art boxes to let, add light and art to attract tourists. The city will also be installing 16 speakers for music and a webcam. Results of the Sponge Docks entry signage prepared by the PAC was presented along with staff generated prototypes incorporating suggestions from the survey. Does anyone have any questions or comments about the art boxes? 
Okay, moving on, the Christopher Still mural at Advent Health. Just one quick one. Oh, sure, Bill. On, on the Arpoxis, the exact locations for their installation, has that been decided yet? Yes, okay. uh, Diane and I did a walkthrough and I generated a map. Um, we felt that there were uh, three groupings of five. Uh, the first one is um, around where the spice exchange and wine at the docks are. Okay. The second is around the sponge diver statue. And then the third one would be more around like Yanni's. Okay. So I know there were some challenges because the poles aren't identified and I just wanted to know. Right. Okay. They weren't, weren't numbered. So right. what I did was I, I downloaded a map and put little yellow dots where they should okay. go. So, All right, so uh, we'll probably be there when they're installed, right, Diane? Just, sure. Yeah. And uh, John, yes. Yes. Uh, do we have any idea about a timeline to get them installed? Well, I know that um, several people from the mayor to all the commissioners uh, kind of gave it as a expedited uh, job to Mark LaCourus and uh, I did make some comments I wasn't prepared to, but it seemed that a lot of concerns that were voiced by the merchants here last night, some of them could be answered by the art boxes. They were talking about increased lighting, which the art boxes would provide. And a couple of them said it would be nice to have some art or an art gallery, which obviously there we go. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think with that exception, all of the uh, commissioners you know, agreed that uh, the installation should be expedited. And Mark indicated that there was gonna be a meeting on uh, November 17th, a staff meeting, and he was gonna try to, you know, get it going. And, uh, you know, it seems, you know, and I even asked people, you know, that were here last night, if they had any suggestions about people that might have experienced workers or cherry pickers. And Custa suggested that we contacted the signalization uh, unit of the county, which puts up traffic lights and that sort of thing, because they've helped tarpon out in the past. So Mark said he was going to explore that also. Great. Another question? Sure. Um, you mentioned, and, and you were reading it pretty fast, I was trying to absorb it, uh, about music boxes. What was that about? Uh, they're putting uh, music speakers. It's, it's nothing to do with us. It was just... Okay, I'm just, I'm just curious. As right. To if I have a printout here, I'd be happy to give it to you, oh, but okay, there's no okay, review of what was discussed that's last night. Okay, okay uh, Christopher Still, um, the mural at Advent Health. The work on that is progressing and concrete was re recently poured for the new ER, so the renovations and construction is proceeding. Okay, um, Mark, can we have the uh, photograph of the Indianos mural projected, please? Elizabeth presented um, her progress on the Cultural Center mural, and this is an overview shot. So I think you can see that it's filling in really nicely. Um, the details are just extraordinary. Uh, each, each one of the figures and the animals is, is almost a freestanding work of art in itself. Oh. And all of the background will be, you know, filled in with, you know, greenery, but She's trying to really get the figures and the, uh, you know, the animals, uh, you know, done initially and then, you know, adding the background. But um, because she's working inside, she felt compelled to add a lot more detail. And she mentioned something very interesting that since she's become a grandmother, since she did the last mural, she's changed the, uh, the presence of the object of the subjects in the painting so that they look directly at you and she said that she found that that would be much more appealing to uh, children and families which i happen to agree with mm -hmm. but uh i think you get an idea i mean i could have you know she sent me some really detailed ones but i think you can get a feel for what it is um as you can see it's it's a collage of different um components of, of life in Tarpon Springs. They're not necessarily grouped in any particular order, but it's, uh, it will have a key explaining what each one of the animals and figures are, uh, very similar to the keys that exist in the um, Heritage Center for the still paintings. 
so people will be able to come in and you know uh, learn exactly what you know the meaning of all the uh, the figures in the painting. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I'm just anxious to see it. <laughs> Okay, um, the plaque for the story time sculpture, Diane, is that? Uh... Um, yes, um, I uh, heard from Fast Signs and they should have it done uh, probably by the end of next week. Okay, and do we then... have a price on that? Because I think we approved the funding for it already. Yes, it was, um, because we did the aluminum, it was more like or, um, close to like $400, okay. which was, was great. And um, we also were, you know, talking about the uh, maintenance of our bronze statues. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've reached out to St. Kate um, Arts, who um, did the installation of the naiads at the sponge docks, and asked them to give me a proposal for maintenance on each of our statues. So one for Alma at uh, Craig Park, one for um, the Storytime Sculpture at Cultural Center and one for the Naiads at the Sponge Docks. So I have not received that, you know, from them yet, but um, that will give us, you know, a maintenance plan for each one because, you know, based on the construction and everything, like for instance, I can see that Storybook Time is probably going to require some good maintenance because of the bench, you right. know, kind of thing. So. Anyway, as soon as I get that, I'll share that with the committee. Right. I think we have a recurring annual budget line for maintenance. We do. So uh, this is well within our scope. Okay, the Bahamian Sponger pro uh, Project. Um, there was an article today in the Tampa Bay Times about Rose Cemetery. And one of the things that was mentioned uh, in addition to interviews with both Annie Dabbs and Alan Quarterman is um, an African-American sponge hooker who was interred in the cemetery with some historical references to his role in the spun, you know, the origin of the sponging industry in Tarpon. This is something that I had been unaware of until this point, and I think it's gonna bear some further research, maybe by talking to Annie and or Ellen to find out, uh, you know, who this person was and to, kind of follow up with, uh, you know, the way uh, some of the people in the uh, community feel about the project. So uh, we're gonna defer that for further examination. Anybody else have any comments, questions? No, it's just, it's just really good that you were able to find a person that's, that's on record that's right. doing this. I mean, that's, that's important on this one. I was shocked when I read the article. Uh, Diane forwarded the link to it to everybody not too long ago, so you probably didn't have a chance to look at it, but it was really, it was a well-researched and well-written article. And uh, it was about a woman in Hillsboro who was incorporating it into uh, diversity curriculum. Uh, Joan, I think um, Lucianne has her hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't. I didn't know how to get your attention being in this um, situation. Um, I did notice toward the end of that story, he was the the fellow who was the sponge diver was born in 1898. So he really doesn't represent that very earliest group that we keep trying to capture some specifics on. Uh, he was obviously a sponge diver, and that's really a beautiful graphic on his tombstone, but he is um, probably early early 20th century rather than um, 19th. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a detail that escaped me. As I said, I read it rather quickly, but I'm you know going to go back and take a closer look at it. It's that's almost to the bottom. Right, thanks for bringing it to our attention, Lucian. Okay, now we're back to our wonderful Pelican Brief. <laughs> Yet another unsuccessful text sent to Kyle. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from him. The last communication we had from him indicated that he was still working on it or planning to work on it. So uh, I guess we'll just keep deferring it. It's an approved project until we decide to not do another it. Another direction, maybe. Yeah, a couple of months ago, I remember when you talked to him, it was supposed to be finished the end of October. October. Mm -hmm. That's coming up soon, isn't it? 
He didn't say said, which year, though. Oh. <laughs> Devil's in the details. <laughs> it is. Okay. I think he means well. I think he just is. It, it, it's just not. Right. Right. Getting to it. Okay. Now we're up to the Sisler Field murals. Um, Lucy Ann had uh, sent a request to Diane about references from past meetings um, about Sisler Field and. When I started digging into emails, files, and other documentation, I found out that it was a, a, a project that was mentioned in a May 19th commissioner's workshop, 19th of 2019, um, as, as something that they wanted to do as a priority. It's come up um, frequently since then. It was part of the presentation that was made to the Board of Commissioners at the end of June. And I think I'm going to take a little bit of a hit on this one because um, I kind of let it drift to the back burner. And I think it's something that's, um, you know, easily accomplished. I don't think it's a very complicated project. Uh, I spoke to Diane about generating a draft of a call to artists, and she sent me a template for Americans in the arts. Is that, that's the, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what I did was I created two flyers, one of which was kind of a more popular one that has some of the details about Sisler himself. Uh, and it's enclosed with your, um, your handouts and that's the paint me out to the ball game. And there are five distinct buildings that are all, you know, have very different shapes. Uh, so what I thought would be appropriate uh, would be to have artists submitting uh, concepts is to peg them against the individual uh, buildings. Um, and then we, we know from um, uh, Mark LaCouris that uh, the city has authorized an art artist fee of up to $1,000 plus reasonable expenses for materials that would obviate the need for expensive liability insurance. So something like this would, at this rate, would obviously appeal to young emerging artists and students. And I think this would be a, you know, a perfect uh, project, you know, geared in that direction. And it would be nice if we can pull this off to some extent in time for whatever baseball season we might have coming up in the spring. So Comments, I, questions? I do have a quick question. Sure. The, the call of artists is just reaching out to see what they can they can do per these. Well, yeah. Areas. I mean, if you if you look at this one, the call to artists, the second page in in your handout, it's kind of a uh, this is a little more detailed one, a little more formalized call to artists, but it gives a project summary. Um, you know who the commissioning institution is, a site description. The design criteria, uh, you know, designs may include but are not limit, limited to baseball themes, a budget, a timeline, you know, how they're going to submit uh, their proposals. Okay. Usually what they do is they'll do a sketch or a draft and send a digital version of it to Diane. Diane is our clearinghouse for all of this information. And... Um, you know, we are also uh, going to be reimbursing them for reasonable costs for materials. So, uh, so are you looking for one mural or are you looking for up to five different up murals? Up to five. Okay. So would you vote individually per mural location or would it be per artist? Per artist. Okay, so the artist would do all of them. Yeah, the so, so in other words, let's say that, um, the uh, the side of the bleachers, which is kind of that trapezoidal. Yes, ma'am. My geometry is bad. Don't hold me to that. Uh, the building number three on the other flyer, you would you would submit a design specifically for that uh, structure. Okay. And then when all the designs come in, we would appoint a jury to have people look at the at the designs and. Uh, you know, select which ones, you know, that are going in the, in the, uh, each individual building. A different artist for each. Right. So we could potentially have five, five different, different artists. artists. Correct. Okay. Yeah. We have five different structures with five different, you'll see, and I saw you. 
<laughs> I'm visible. Um, I have to admit, I was a little surprised to see this full-blown call to artist in our packet because um, reflected in the minutes that we just approved, the proposal to do murals died for lack of a second last month. And the ensuing discussion by committee members indicated that we would like to discuss it a little bit more and maybe consider other art forms. Um, so I'm, I'm surprised we're going ahead, you know, after the, the committee really didn't agree to that. So um, I, I, for one, would love to see mosaics. Uh, I'd love to see sculpture. Uh, I think we've, we've done so much with murals that um, this bears a little bit of discussion, especially given last month's um, lack of a second. Uh, I, I guess, uh, I guess what my thought was on this is that um, I agree with you about sculptures and murals, but I think when we get into that uh, subject matter, we're we're not talking about a thousand dollar budget anymore. I don't know that we need to be limited to a thousand dollar budget if this is an important location and we feel it's it's worthy of consideration. I just I would like to hear a little bit more discussion and um, actual consensus of the group because we didn't have it last month. Yeah, these are drafts, Bill? Yeah, yeah. and I agree with Lucienne. It, it, you know, we, my position the last time was I'm not against doing, if this is a low hanging fruit that can, that can have some value, but right. I don't wanna see it end at this. I don't think that this should be what we say is, this is what we're doing for Sisler. I think we need to do more there. Uh, but, you know, if, if this is a, a a small project to, to get something started and take right. advantage of some uh, of the location. I'm okay with that. It's just, I think, I don't want to stop with that. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be, you know. Right, well, I, I think you phrased it perfectly. It is low hanging fruit. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, as I said, you know, with that thousand dollar threshold, if we do decide to do these murals, it would be geared for, you know, emerging and student artists. And I'm sure, and the thing is, at, at this rate, you know, we'd get something up. And if we did want it to do something more ambitious down the road, uh, they could easily be painted over if they're not considered yeah. appropriate. I mean, would, would it be appropriate or would, would it be an idea to take and pick one of these five that we feel as a committee is, is, is probably has the, lends itself the most to, to, to the biggest bang for Absolutely. the buck and do one of them to, to catch that low hanging fruit to get something started there at Sisler and then you know move from there. That works, absolutely. Um, Trish? <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I was just wondering if some of the committee feel like we should have, <clears throat> excuse me, different types of art. Are we on a strict budget for this? I mean, can we do the murals? and also add other things to it? I mean, I would love would like. to have- I, I would like to see the murals, but I'm- I'd really love to see something kinetic, you know, with movement and, and something that the kids could really, you know- Could we do that in addition to the murals? I mean, why is it an either or type of thing? Why can't mm -hmm. we do both? Well, I um, figured that, you know, if we're looking at say a max of five, the, the fees would be 5,000 plus maybe another 5,000 for materials, probably not that much. So you're talking about 10,000 for that. So that still leaves us about 200,000 in the budget for more ambitious projects. So I don't think this is making such a dent. David, I see. You. Yeah, I also have a question. When you're saying murals, is that just like paintings of people and animals or are you saying paintings at all? It it's, a, it's, an, it's an artist's interpretation. Okay. So, you know, uh, baseball themes are suggested and again, but not necessarily. Is there any way to completely leave it up to the artist to see what oh, they absolutely. can come up with? So, is so is it, it I, oh, the, 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 the um, so you've authorized a, a, an artist fee of $1,000 and you have five or so, so is that is that a set thing that we have to have it at a thousand dollars, or the, could it be more for for one or two? Or th well, the the thousand dollar threshold was what was set by 
mark, right. yeah. which would get them into the status of uh, independent subcontractors. So they would be covered under the city's liability insurance. Right. And that's the problem we've had with, uh, you know, the mural projects in the past. And I know, you know, like Elizabeth had to spend quite a bit of money to get artist insurance that satisfied the requirements that were right. set by the right. city attorney. I think, I, I, you know, if we, if we get more ambitious, it's gonna become a more complex thing. Like, like Bill was saying, he'd like to see kinetic but kinetic could require some engineering. And also kinetic also can be a, an attractive nuisance, which I've run into many times as an artist. You put something outside that, it, that I mean, sometimes, you know, like there's the laws that, that railings in, in, in um, railings on, on uh, patios have to be so, so wide because a mm. kid could stick their head in it. That's an attractive nuisance, right? right? So. So art design out in the public really requires that a lot. And that requires a little bit more of an involvement than, than say a thousand dollars or even $5,000 because that could require laying down a foundation, mm -hmm. making sure the thing is, has got its own structural integrity right. and, and is not dangerous, <laughs> you know, and, you know, not sharp edges, not, not a material that somebody's going to, I mean, because there could be all sorts of, of problems with it. Kinetic art, I, I, you know, it's, it's really great if you put it up high so you can't get to it. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, but Joan, I'm, I'm thinking of... Uh, Lu uh, Lucianne has her hand up, just oh, so Lucy, you know. Oh, sorry. I, I, okay. Um, all of that considered, um, I, I understand all of those precautions. I think we have an incredible opportunity here to expose youth to quality works of art. And I understand the $1,000 threshold when you're trying to get um, small murals done. But I don't think we ought to go for the lowest common denominator here. I think it's an opportunity to, to showcase some really challenging art that might open the eyes of youngsters who are there engaging in sports. And uh, I'd like to see us aim a little bit higher too. See, I'd like to do both. I think that this engenders uh, community involvement for young people. And I agree that they should be exposed to the higher denominator art, but I also think they should be encouraged to participate in art at this level. It's, it's kind of uh, sort of an entree into the world of public art. It might inspire some children to do some you know, creative thinking, creative projects, creative art, without us getting, you know, uh, you know, hit for a big tag. But I don't think it obviates the need for doing a major project. And I think, I think we should probably get going on something like that. You know, I, I guess I'm in the odd position of agreeing with both points of view. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, even if we do one, you know, uh, you know, as Bill suggested, at least, as I said, it'll bring some community involvement, which I think is important. Bring some attention to the fields themselves. Right, right. We can go from there. Um, can, I, can I come in on this? Uh, sure. There is, there is a possibility. I, I don't know whether we can do this or not, but uh, if we were to go maybe a little bit further and think of this as a mosaic or tile work uh, to where uh, we could incorporate the schools themselves and, and have, have somehow or another, maybe connect this up with St. Pete College or something like that, where you, you have just subway tile, just bought white subway tile, which you can then paint on and then fire it or coat it or something like that. And uh, a lot of communities do this where they get organized, organized groups working to, uh, to write the, you know, say a story about Sisler Field or about baseball or about mm -hmm. baseball in Tarpon Springs and things like that. And then you get a really uh, wide range of, of possibilities on it. it. It doesn't have to be the whole park, but it could be one major wall. And then you could use that as a springboard to get this to happen again. Uh, and not only in this location, but maybe in some others. I mean, people love to see this. You know, you love to look at 
a hundred images that, that kids have made of, of what baseball is like in Tartan Springs or something like that. But that I could see happening in a way because it, but it would require uh, sort of a, a, a broad community involvement with an institution that can do the, the, the technical stuff to, to put this up. Right. And um, that, that would be something I could see happening that would generate a lot of excitement, you know, because every kid has how many parents and relatives and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so, excuse me. <laughs> you see. So, um, I, you know, I, that's just a suggestion for this, how it could go a little bit further. Uh, you could start it with, uh, if you have the $5,000 budget, I think you could probably do this for that, not on all the buildings, but on one, and it would be more than just painting on a wall. Mm -hmm. And and that's the that's the thing we want to get past a little bit. Um, having done large mosaics, I mean, it, that it's a very complex thing. It's not just gluing something onto the side of a building. Right. You know, so it's, uh, um, you know, it, but there there's a little bit of work in that, but I think it's very doable. Okay, what constantly keeps you know, rattling around in my brain because it's been my biggest bugaboo since I've been working on this committee are all the liability issues. And, you know, that's a fantastic project, but you're involving children, you're involving groups and other institutions. And, you know, we go back to the famous L word, you know, and, you know, I, I guess that's why, you know, I'd like to see at least one of these things done, just as I said, you know, to move forward yeah done. to move forward to have something done yep. to you know to show that there's some movement that's not being blocked by these liability insurance issues if it, to community involvement for the younger artists if it becomes community involvement are we able to supplement or are we able to put the funds together to take care of any liability that would have to be that's a question for Tom Trask. Okay. In other words, if, if we do take on a community project, you know, can we as the PAC committee, you know, fund that liability for that particular project? I think you'd have to look at the ordinance. I, I'm, I, I don't know the answer. I should. Um, Lucianne? Uh, yeah, I, I like that idea of looking for the solution. I also like the idea of maybe starting with one thousand dollar mural and then in terms of the collaborative uh, tile project painting on tile isn't the field under the purview of the rec department and can they serve as the um, partner to us and would and would then the city's liability cover them brilliant that's kind of a multi-part question but if it is the rec department I know they do youth programs all the time. So that might be a wonderful solution. That was brilliant. Thank you. One, one other possibility. I don't know, but um, if, if this could be done as class assignments, you know, as class participation in the, in the elementary and middle school, mm -hmm. uh, would that, would then the school cover that kind of uh, insurance and liability? It would umbrella it, wouldn't it? Trish? Yeah. This is this is, discussion is interesting because um, I was just in uh, Tennessee last week, <clears throat> excuse me, and I did a walk around Johnson City, Tennessee, which is a college town, and specifically I wanted to see their murals, and they had a lot of murals yeah. in the town. Have you been there? I've not, but You've I've not. seen the pictures. What is inter What was interesting to me was there was a there was a big long wall. It was a I don't think it was a public building. I'm not sure what the business was, but this was something that they used um, to depict sort of the history of Johnson City. I took pictures of them and I'm going to send them to the PAC committee so that you can get an idea of what the cities are doing. Um, but what they did, they went to the schools, they went to the schools and each of the schools in the um, vicinity were, were responsible for one of the paintings that they did on the wall. And then they had a plaque that had the history of what they did and why they did it and so forth about the history mm -hmm. and so forth. That was the first big, um, um, I, I call it a plaque, you know, one a painting. Mm -hmm. And then they had the row of paintings 
that were done and planned by the schools, the school children. I, I think some of them were done by the children. I'm, that wasn't real clear exactly who did the actual art, mm -hmm. but it was a school project from all the schools. And um, I, I want to get in touch with the, um, I'm sure since that was a city project, then they probably did city insurance on that. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested to talk to the public art committee chairman there and find out Good how idea. they how they find, and also in, uh, I was staying in Kingsport, which is close to Johnson City. And we did a, I did a walk around Kingsport and Johnson City and saw all the art and they have it on private businesses. And so I want to find out how they, how they. Um, got a great website, Johnson City does. It's a really nice public art. I haven't been website. on the website, but um, you know, I just got home. And so I haven't put all this together. I have my photographs that I put on Facebook, but I was going to send them to the committee so that you know, we can discuss that uh, and hopefully get some information from their art committees mm -hmm. on how they finance the insurance issues. Joan? Yes? Excuse me. Diane? <laughs> uh, thank God this chair <laughs> swivel. Sorry. We're looking. I'm looking around with you now. <laughs> um, yeah. I just wanted to remind everybody that, um, you know, with the, the schools and COVID and, you know, being out of session and everything, it can be a little difficult. But I wanted to remind you all, too, about a way that you could facilitate getting the kids involved because if they do the artwork in their class, remember, you can put these pieces together in like a collage format right. and then have the, the building wrapped ah. with the way sort of. that, um, you know, Chris still did the Macris building. Right. That might be a way to get um, a nice collection, you know, of student artwork, but not needing to worry about the, um, you know, uh, the insurance and things like that. Cause as long as the artwork is done in the artist's studio, you know, right. then the it's not required. But if it's done on public property, then the insurance is required. Right. Thank does you. that apply, Diane? I mean, does that technique apply to t uh, to a tile surface? I don't know the answer to that, but I was just thinking if, um, you know, I know that the artwork, if it was done in pastels or acrylics or whatever, you know, they, the method was that they could take you know, take a picture, but I would think that if it was a mosaic, they could they would have to take a photograph of it too, and then you know put it on the wall. So, you know that's I'd have to reach out to the gentleman, but I think as long as it's a photograph, we can wrap anything. Yeah, you mean the applique? Pardon? The applique? What applique? Yeah, the applique. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think any any high res digital image can be uh, converted mm -hmm. to an applique. So it, de it depends on what you all want mm -hmm. them to use, what medium. Um, well, I, I'd like to entertain a motion to do one of the thousand dollars Sisler murals. I'll make a motion. Bill, second. Second. Patricia, second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, nays? Well, it looks like we have the, an approval to go ahead with one of the murals. Okay. Okay. Um, How do we go about the, the next step or the next phase to do something more substantial? I mean, what, what, what do we need to do to lay the groundwork to get that started? We need one of our PAC members to bring a proposal before the committee. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I, you know, I'm not the artist, so I don't have the idea of, of what it should be. Right. I mean, somehow we've got to, somebody's got to get their hands around, you know, what can this be? Right. Um, so that we can all kind of get around it and, and push forward. Well, I, th I think what's been mentioned a lot, and I know Robert is very well connected in, you know, in Pinellas uh, with a lot of artists and things like that, I think if someone of Robert's stature, stature could start talking it up. I know Trish has a lot of connections. I think if we, you know, look to other municipalities, see what's been done there, find out who's done them, 
to find out whether we could find an appropriate project for Tarpon Springs and bring it before the committee. Um, I've been craving a lot more committee involvement with just such projects. And I think, you know, I think it's key that, you know, people come back with, you know, and I, I've been kind of moaning and complaining for months because this format is not conducive. We used to be like around a table and I think it was much easier to toss ideas around and thank God these chairs swivel. <laughs> yeah, but- uh, That's easier than Zoom. Yes, but you know, I, I think, you know, like Lucy Ann seems to have a lot of different concepts about, you know, uh, a major, you know, art piece in Tarpon. You know, we did get the uh, Icaria sculpture, which is probably one of the first That's contemporary great. sculptures we've gotten in town. That's a step, yep. you know. So I think we have to, you know, get this momentum going and see, you know, what kind of art is out there, kinetic, you know, uh, metal, abstract, free flowing, um, you know. David? I got something quick. I mean, if it's a sculpture, could it be something that children can also play on? Uh, again, you kind of run into liability. Yeah, issues. you do run into some liability with that. If you if you design it as a playground, um, you you get there's there's lots of you know requirements for that. You know, you got ADA, you got all this kind of stuff to deal with with uh, uh, participation. Uh, as soon as somebody touches something, I mean. You know, as an as an artist, you build something, and you you say, well, somebody can touch it, and they, you know, they then you know they don't. The general public doesn't quite touch something like an artist would touch something, right? There's a certain understanding of the the reverence of the thing. Some people just deal with it like it's a rock right there in the middle of a of a park. Um, I think I think uh, that you know, designing a, 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 an interactive playground. Is, is a really good way to go. It's probably an expensive way to go, probably. right? And you need a place for it to be. You need a really ideal place for something like that to be. And Tarpon Springs happens to have sort of two, and you know, two entities to it, you know, and which one, you know, which one is it? And that's what I was thinking about, um, you know, how do we go about with proposing a, a signature sculptural involvement for Tarpon Springs is where is it going to be? Mm -hmm. It needs that kind of specific because when you start attracting artists that can deal with something like that, that can deal with it more in a more contemporary way, not a statue, but something that that has an involvement kind of thing um, and it has a reverence to a relevant, I mean, not a reverence, a, a relationship to to where it is and to what mm -hmm. it is, uh, that you're going to attract people that are going to get very creative with. And, uh, but you, you sort of need a place. You need something for them to build off of, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And is there a, a major, you know, a, a major park area, a major area that's, that's open? You know, like, like, for instance, a really great spot that I know a lot of people have looked at, and I, I happen to see a photograph from back in the 20s of the park in front of uh, Mama Mir's mural. Magnesium. That's always been like that. It's not now a parking lot, but before that was those trees or, or trees were there. Mm -hmm. There was Pinellas Avenue, there was, tar you know, that has always been there and everybody's always wanted it. It's sitting there as a parking lot. Mm -hmm. It's very useful. I park there all the time, but, right. but <laughs> that would be a really major central place. It would be uh, on the way, I mean, during Epiphany, it would be along the, the route. I mean, it's, it's, it's the way in. You, you're going to go to, to the docks. You're going to probably go by that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's always, I mean, I've talked with people involved in the county. They've always had their, their sights on that, <laughs> that spot, you right. know, because that, that is the spot. I mean, that's, if you were in downtown St. Pete, it's the waterfront in front of the pier, you know, that, Right. That, that's the kind of thing. Or in Clearwater, it's down by where they want to put the, the, the music venue. You know, they, so this is something that would really help Tarpon Springs, but that's probably unattainable, but you need something of an equivalence to that. And that's, that to me is how we, if we can find a location that we think we could put a major piece of art in, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that would be a good first step. Yeah. And then, then you could apply some kind of sense of budget. I mean, what's the most you've ever paid for something here? Well, you know, I noticed that, that we have expenditures that, that have been recorded, but I mean, have we gone above $100,000? Well, the, yeah, the, the Glen and Goodacre, you know, yeah, the okay, Denians so, and Storytime. So, so you've got to oh. go beyond that. Sorry, Lucianne. Um, yeah, we have a new option, a new option that I think is every bit as exciting as Mother Mira's parking lot, which traditionally was kind of the town square. But um, in the recent election, the population of Tarpon Springs, the voting population, agreed to purchase the Hoffman property at the foot of Tarpon Avenue overlooking Spring Bayou. Uh, I know there is going to be a public hearing on the use of that property. There are ideas that the Safford House be moved there, but I think that's a great opportunity for a, um, a landmark uh, work of art. And it could fit very easily with the, with the Safford House. So it'll take some coordination, some convincing, maybe some lobbying, but... Um, I, I think that's the currently available opportunity, Robert. Well, that would that we should definitely throw our hat in the ring for that one to be considered as you know a site for a major piece of public art. Well, and you know, and and there's no reason why we couldn't also put you know consideration because I know that the city's talking about a lot of. Um, different options for public parking because it's becoming an issue in town. And I think they're talking about building parking garages and this kind of thing. So if it's possible to kind of, you know, reclaim Mother Mears, which I, I think was like a town square garden. And I think that big urn was one of the original pieces from the garden. Um, that would be a great place for a couple of major art pieces and as Lucienne suggested the uh the Hoffman property so uh I think that's we should get on the radar screen for any uh consideration for things that are uh you know going to be discussed for the property I, I think that that's really a great suggestion that that particular piece of property because think of the photo op of the procession the uh the the, the whole event that goes on right there I mean uh, mm -hmm. and and how this could be, um, you know, not necessarily figurative sculpture it could be, uh, but there could be some kind of thing that deals with the whole involvement of, of epiphany and, 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 you know, how, how it really sets that event apart. I mean, one, I, I went one year and I was a part of a crowd of 20,000 people, which is, you know, what's that? You know, what's the population of Tarpon Springs? I mean, it's, Right. You know, it's, it's a lot of people came, and and it's a very visible spot, and, and I think it it's something that a lot of people can interpret that in many many different ways, mm -hmm. and you you could get maybe that that major piece of of, of sculpture, a major piece of art in that particular site because it's important enough to the city, mm -hmm. to Pinellas County, to the tourist board, to all that kind right. of stuff, and and. Think of the photo op of something really impressive right there. Right. I think we've got some good enthusiasm and impetus going. I think, uh, Joan. Yes. Excuse me. I just wanted to remind the um, the pack too that you you know if you do these big major um, art installations, you know that artist, whoever is chosen for that project can wrap their, the cost of their insurance into the cost of the project. Right. So I think that helps with, you know, the, the expenses that the city is asking for, you know, because any major project, you know, is mm -hmm. gonna require time. And, and uh, so I think that's a, a good thing to let artists know, you know, when they're putting these big proposals in. Right. Well, I think somebody does that big a proposal Thank understands you. the insurance thing. I mean, they car mm -hmm. carry it themselves, sure. and uh, right, you know, and they always wrap it in. It's always part of the budget. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the yeah, well, that's the difference between the thousand dollar yes, student mural and much different. Right, Robert right. over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> much different. 
Could you come and do a mural for us, Robert, for a thousand dollars? And can I have it? <laughs> Carol and I will do one for free. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing we can do. I, I can't. We may hold you to that. Is this being recorded? Uh, okay. So I think we've got a lot of great things to follow up on. Yeah. And uh, definitely have to find out how to get, as I said, our hat in the ring for both. Hoffman property. Thank you, Lucianne and Robert for the Mears parking lot. I think they would both be ideal. Okay. Said many people have tried to get a hold of it from the county. <laughs> no. Right. Okay, Bill. Now we're on to our wonderful recycling container project. <laughs> yeah, we we talked to uh, Department of Public Works, and they had four things that they would like to see from whatever we do. And that would be that the top of the can single opening with rain shield um, and hinged lid with removable container, uh, non perforated to keep rain out and prefer recycled material, but uh, must be commercial grade. So in, in listening to all the, the requests that they have, I mean, it, it seems as though we're going to have to have identified a container size that whatever is created, a container will go in it that can be pulled out and, okay. and emptied. Um, the original thought with the, is it goby fish? Right. Okay. Uh, was more of an open style. And I've done those already as a, uh, a litter pickup type thing that right. is temporary. But if you're doing something permanent with all kinds of debris that can be put in there, I understand why that's a negative Plus they're very difficult to empty. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I do have, we have everything from the, the regular containers that you can get that artists can, yeah. Right. So I, I've, I, I pulled a couple of things that um, are possibilities, but the, the fish that we had originally started with, it seems like it's not something that uh, DPW would be interested in, in having to deal with. Okay. Okay. So well, I think that uh, kind of firmly drives the stake into the heart of that concept. Well, into that concept. And unless we're interested in, in, in doing some things to make the, you know, the receptacles that we have around, you know, more interesting, you know, as a, as a part of the infrastructure that uh, we can create some art with. But right. Again, that could be like a student project to, you know, paint those. I guess most of them are concrete. Some are concrete. It's like, you know, there's all kinds of things that, that, right. that are out there that we can um, help to identify. But the, the fish itself out at Sunset Park is probably not going to. Sorry, Diane, did any, did that pretty much what you got out of the yeah. conversation with Tom? Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want to do for our poor Department of Public Works folks is make their life more miserable <laughs> with something that they've right. got to maintain, you know, right. um, that, that's, that's painful. Okay, now. I think, I don't know whether we need a motion on this, but because I think Bill gave a pretty thorough report, I think we're going to kind of uh, abandon the goby fish concept. And uh, do you want to perhaps get some of that information about alternative containers out to the pack? And I can. Maybe we can get uh, some opinions on okay. it. Um, okay, so that will just. I do have one thing. When I was out in Idaho, they had these solar powered and then they would uh, compress all the recyclable material. I don't know how much those are, but maybe you can kind of put it like a billboard style to where you could actually put artwork behind it somehow. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting you mentioned that because Dunedin has okay. the same thing. Okay, and I did take a picture down there along the, uh, the, the trail. That, that compacts, so yeah, yeah, compacts it. yeah. So, it's an idea. It's one of those things to look at as a, as an option. And and there they they advertise, you know, the city itself, but you could almost use it to generate some revenue, right? You right. know, with advertising possibilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, because I'm with you on the open concept, it looks really cool, but you're going to have people throwing different types of garbage in there. It's fine for temporary, right? If you're doing something to make a statement, but to have it there on a regular basis, or like half full sodas that are now pouring all over the ground. Yeah. That was that was the yeah. primary objection when this first came up, and uh, you know, uh, it was originally meant for 
pure recycling, mostly the plastic water bottles and that kind of thing. But human nature being what it is, you're going to get the half people are filled people. soda bottles and cans and old hamburgers and banana peels. banana peels and other such appetizing stuff that our wonderful public works department really doesn't <laughs> want to deal with. Symbolism of, of yeah. art and trash <laughs> <laughs> gone together, you know, it just uh... right. So, Bill, you're going to send those out. That's every I time I hear the word solar powers powered, my little ears perk up. Uh, that sounds like an interesting. And they could least. have some kinetic to it as well. They could light up, you know, when you put it in there and it com compacts, it lights up or does something. You know. Oh, that would be great for the kids. Encourage them to cool. recycle. Wonderful. That was the intent. Right. Yep. Does anybody else have any comments or? I think, I think uh, Michaela has left us. I think so. Okay. All right, so Bill, you're gonna just get us a little more information on that. And maybe David, you'd like to work on that too, if you, you know. Sure. I think we collaborate can on that, that'd okay. be perfect. Getting homework your first day of school. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, here's another bugaboo, the golf course water tower. Okay, uh, I think, you know, we discussed the fact that very, Little of it is readily visible, and it would be an enormous undertaking. And um, I'd like to get everybody's input into whether this is something we should cancel, defer, or keep alive. Well, Robert? I, I just remember a last meeting, I can't remember who it was, but said they looked for it and couldn't find it. So I think it's pretty hard. You know, to really put a lot of our resources into that project, if, if a member of this committee is looking for this thing and they can't find it, mm -hmm. yeah. So that says a lot, Trish. Yeah, I would. I would like to see it uh, deferred or canceled for right now. Okay, okay. David. Um, I would say deferred on the tower. Okay. Deferred. Deferred. Okay. Yeah. Deferred. Okay. Lucienne and Bill are GIS maps. Uh, Mark, could you project the uh, the map, please? Luciana, are you ready for the map? Sure. Okay. Sorry, I jumped the gun we, a little. We don't have a whole lot more to to talk about other than the fact that the corridors were added. Luciana put together the streets and and she hit them right on because uh, I went to the comprehensive plan that identified the tra different traffic routes throughout uh, uh, the city of Tarpon Springs. And she was spot on with, with the different corridors. So that's what's been added to, to the map itself. Um, Lucienne, any other comments you had on it? Uh, just one sort of tangential, and that is I asked Diane to get from the finance office the list of construction projects over time that have contributed actual dollars to our fund. And they're scattered all over town. So I think having a wider view than um, the heavily concentrated central core of the city um, is justified if we can find the right spots and if we can find the right projects. But for example, there is a, a major project out in the um, Enclote area, there have been projects close to the highway, if not on the highway, and that of course is not an ideal location, but, but our funding is coming from a very broad uh, geographic area within the city. So uh, I, think, I think we have every justification for um, widening our scope. Okay, uh, I know that we had uh, kind of a discussion on that under new business. Do you want to uh, consolidate the uh, discussion of the GIS map with the, uh, the financials? Yeah, I, I don't know that there is a whole lot much more to say other than noting those locations around town. To okay. me, it's just another drop of information to add to our reasoning when we consider projects. Okay. Um, 
So you're talking about art projects, not development projects. I just wanted to. <laughs> I don't think we have the budget for development projects. No, I, I, what I'm saying is development projects that have funded our, our public art effort have come from all over town. Right. Okay. Okay, does anybody have any questions or comments about these, uh, the, the uh, contributions to the public art fund? I know we have, uh, I guess it's the second to the last, no. It's the first page of the financial printouts that Diane gave us. Really good information to have. I, mm. I was surprised by some, so. Right. And then there's an itemization of the, um, the bike racks that were completed in 2019. Um, the Indianos mural, the art boxes, um, the mermaid, the mother Mears mural, um, the naiads. I guess the naiads in Storybook Time were uh, our biggest expenditure to date on any art pieces, um, about 160,000 other expenditures. Again, they're kind of, uh, you know, routine maintenance and signage and, you know, that type of thing. Um, and then there's some illustrations of the Innis project that we discussed and then the GIS maps. Did you want to add anything further, Bill or Lucienne, about the GIS mappings? No, I think it's just to be noted that it's a tool that will continue to add different pieces to to help us make, you know, decisions. Right. And, uh, you know, at some point, I think, you know, as we look ahead to the, to the upcoming years, I, I think it gives us a, where we should be focusing our efforts. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and again, everything is to try to make it easy to make some of these decisions that, yeah, that's a good project. That's where it needs to be. Um, and I think this should help us with some of that. Uh, do you think it would be advisable to try to um, ascertain whether there are any major development projects in the hopper to, you know, anticipate, you know, additions to the budget. Yeah. The other thing is, you know, I didn't see anything. Do we have any like typical maintenance that has to be done on any of the artwork that we have? Yes. In fact, Diane just discussed it earlier. We okay. have, we have a line, uh, a maintenance line. I think it's 2,500 mm. annually in the budget. We, I don't think we've expended it all in the past. No, there's, it's a percentage of the, of the amount that comes in that goes in, automatically goes into the maintenance right. fund, okay. you know, kind of thing. Uh, I can't re recall the percentage right offhand, but right. it's just whatever a new project comes in and we get money for it, it takes that, that out that and is puts put it in. Into, uh, right, right. so okay. that's why I was getting, um, you know, most of the artwork um, doesn't really, like the bike racks, if something breaks, you know, we would have to mm -hmm. go ahead and, um, you know, fix that. But it was really about the bronze statues right now. You right, know, that, I remember Alma was needed, in bad shape. Know, work. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, when I made the presentation at the end of June to the Board of Commissioners in a PowerPoint, and I guess you could go back to, the, I think it was June 23rd, the, the PowerPoints on the uh, YouTube video. And uh, there was a breakdown of our budget, including the expenditures and what was allocated for maintenance and what was actually expended. Okay. And I think the, the only major thing we did, as Diane said, was AMA. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I think going forward, we, as Diane said, you know, uh, she's just going to get an estimate from St. Kate's, who we found to be the I guess the most knowledgeable and re reliable in terms of doing those uh, bronze, bronze, you know, uh, restoration and preservation techniques. They did a beautiful job on AMA. Now, do we know when in the cycle 
because I mean, all that information can be added to the GIS when in the cycle you're going to have to do those sculptures or, or statues that they're going to need a, a cleaning or they're going to need a, you know, so that we can plan. That's why I'm, um, I asked St. Kate to come out and do an assessment on each of our three sculptures because probably that will be different for each one and then give us an estimate on that cost, you know, and based on how many times a year they would have to be revisited. Like I said, the one that I feel like is probably gonna take the most um, care is storybook time because there it's on a teak bench and it needs to be sealed and, you know, and so it was in storage for a long, you know, time, so. Mm -hmm. That's the one, but um, they have been out and actually they, St. Kate came out and restored um, the, the sponge diver recently oh. at the sponge docks too. So they're, they're well versed on okay. their care. Mm -hmm. Lucianne, I think yeah. her hand up. This isn't exactly maintenance, but it occurred to me when I was at the docks, you know, looking at the locations we've talked about for the art boxes, um, the possible <clears throat> African-American sponger, et cetera. The landscaping on the existing sponge diver statue is very formal. It's, uh, there are topiary trimmed bushes and some other flowering shrubs. And I don't know whether this is the appropriate time for this discussion, but I think we maybe need to pay attention to the landscaping and its appropriateness for the sculpture. For example, on the sponge diver, I would think that some kind of native Florida grass with a lot of movement to it would be a little bit more free flowing, maybe suggest seagrass um, and just be a little bit more complementary to that piece of sculpture. Unfortunately, that's not our sculpture. Oh, um, oh yeah. I didn't know that. That's well, that it's a city sculpture, but it's not the a public art sculpture. We um, that was donated by uh, one of the family, one of the Greek families years and years ago. I believe so. there are a series of plaques on the front of the uh, plinth that have the names of the people that contributed to the statue. So the city doesn't maintain it. The city does maintain it, but the um, the public art committee does not. So that would be something to suggest, I guess, to Tom Function's, you know, location. I don't know, but that's not us, in other words. Yeah, it's just like the, um, the cross retriever statue next to the cathedral is not one of our statues either. It's a private one. Yeah. Um, there was a great deal of discussion last night at the uh, the Sponge Docks Town Hall meeting about uh, redoing a lot of the landscaping. Um, the merchants want the removal of the oak trees because they're messy and really, you know, don't add anything. Uh, and they want uh, palm trees, you know, instead, and maybe some, uh, you know, the sail shades to provide sail, you know, if the, if the oak trees are taken down. So there is discussion about redoing the landscaping down there, but most of this seems to be at the behest of the merchants working with the city. But it, you know, it might be, I love the idea of the seagrasses yeah. around it's the sponge diver idea. statue. I think that would be fantastic, but I don't know what, who or what we could suggest it to. Okay, uh, the Innis property uh, discussion. I believe we got some material from Karen Lemons. That was from Sandra via me. Let's see. I know that at one of the um, public art committee um, meetings, it, the Innis property was identified as a, a great location for something. So um, we had this information that we did back in 
January, and uh, so I wanted to pass that on to the uh, Public Art Committee. So you would, and uh, we do have the name of the owner. The owner would just have to be approached to see if they would be interested in some sort of art there. Okay, so it's it, privately you're... owned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, closing procedures. Oh, city announcements. Diane, do you have some? No, not anything right now. Okay. Uh, Bill? Back, back to the Innis. I mean, are, are we going to look at it further or? I think, as Diane suggested, we have to have a, a discussion with the owner of the property, property first. Okay. Because I think it would be pointless to go ahead and try oh, to do yes, a project and then find out, you know. Something like what happened to the the sponge ducks proposal that just died because there was a disagreement with the property owner. Right. And then the decision that you know we were just going to concentrate on city owned property. So. I do have the name of the owner. If somebody on the public art committee would like to reach out to them, Lucianne's got her hand up. Lucianne. I I think I know the owner and would be happy to make an initial approach. Perfect. Great. That'd be great. I figured you know everybody in Tarpon by now. <laughs> okay. Uh, David, do you have anything you'd like to throw into the pot? Um, going back to the illuminated art boxes, I do like the idea about having a gallery. And, uh, you know, for new and inspiring artists, as well as artists that are selling. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of those proceeds could go back into the fund as well. You know, like a place for the art box boxes to put you back towards. I think that that could be, I like that idea. Right. I think I heard. Well, uh, one of the things that uh, was kind of a component of the original art box proposal is that the, uh, all of the images in the boxes are photographs of artwork there. And uh, I gave Diane um, uh, a spreadsheet with all of the artists uh, information and um, her assistant at uh, Tarpon Arts is working on a brochure so that when people, if people are interested in buying any of the artwork that deal directly with the artist. Uh, I don't know how it would work to set up a pack gallery per se. I know the Corda three sisters, two sisters, that's being split up right now. Mm -hmm. And I know they're going to have some frontage there. So I don't know if that's right. And of course, there's the Tarpon that. Art Guild, which Trish is affiliated with. Okay. Even so. so, I mean, in my estimation, you can't have too many art galleries, but, you know, I don't know. Again, you know, they were talking about one at the sponge docks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, yeah, it'd be something worth something looking into, but my initial impression would be that it would be a, uh, an individual, you know, attempt. I know that somebody tried one where the wine society is now and that didn't last very long. It was a combination print shop and art gallery and it could even start off as an affiliation with one of the uh, art galleries currently, I mm -hmm. think, perhaps. Right. And I know uh, Robert is working on some projects too. Yeah. And the, the, the emphasis is working on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were talking about the gallery. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me where the wine shop is now. I guess the wine shop moved into it. <clears throat> the reason that they closed was um, like personal family problems. Mm -hmm. um, also the COVID came in and um, that's why they closed. Otherwise it, it was nice having another gallery right. actually. Yeah, she had some nice work there. Some yeah. Beautiful work there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, closing procedures. Does anybody have any additions to the agenda for next month? Speak now. Well, we could, if, if you think of anything, we, you could always email it to Diane. 
Our next regular meeting is December 8th at 2 p.m. And it says here via Zoom. I imagine that that's uh, open to modification. Well, it's probably going to be just like this. Okay. Unless the governor changes his mind. Okay. <laughs> so uh, do nothing till we hear from you, correct? Right. Assume you're going to be here. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. It's 3.15. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I make a motion that we be adjourned. Okay. Trish, second. Bill? We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> this is so much nicer than the Zoom meeting, I think. It's just nice to see everybody in person. Mm -hmm. and it's